looks like I was crying freaks. We were we were laughing at a comedy skit before before we hit publish or stream. What's up? We're back. What is this? Two ninety seven, two ninety eight. Ooh, a pop. I haven't heard a pop in a while. It wasn't that good. Ooh, that I was just, good. I just spilled a little bit. It, it felt like been, you haven't been popping bottles in a while. You're a little rusty. It felt like we were due. Ding dong. Cheers, freaks. The wicked chick coin fraud is off to jail. 25 years. Everybody's like, oh, it's not enough, which I agree with, but it's more than I was expecting. I thought he was going to get like a 10 year slap on the wrist. I, I think 25 years, you know, I mean, it's it's fucked up when you compare it to something like Ross Ulbricht, who should be free, or Julian Assange, who should be free. But, I mean, 25 years is a lot of fucking time. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to be the one out here calling for more than 25 years. Like, that's... He's going to be, like, 75 by the time he gets out. And I'll be, like, 55. <laughs> Same difference. Sorry, boomer freaks. That's a long force toddle. I'm sure he's got some private keys stashed somewhere. He had to give up $11 billion too, right? $11 billion in fines or something. $11 billion. Yeah. I wonder if I, I don't think he has. He's definitely not liquid he... in 11 billion. No, dude, I, this is what we were talking about. Like it's different than like CZ. Like, I think his, like, his bug out bag, his, like, you know, Sopranos duffel bag in the, in, in, in the sheetrock or whatever, was just all shit coins. Like, it just was never a Bitcoiner. I don't think he has much Bitcoin, is my guess. Like, I think he actually believed his bullshit. Probably has, like, private keys to, like, a ton of, uh, FTT token. It's, like, completely worthless. All the Sam coin bullshits. Maybe he has a bag of Solana, but like that's going to be worthless in 25 years. Got yeah, he's missing out on the Joe Bowden gains right now. <laughs> it's good to see. He deserves to be in jail. When Barry? That's a good question. <clears throat> I was talking to somebody yesterday who I won't mention, but they're close to one of the situations that Barry's involved in. And he mentioned to me that he would not be surprised if it happens to him too. I think Barry got the get out of jail free card by uh, getting GBTC listed as an ETF and causing downward price pressure as all the other ETFs caused upward price pressure. That's, that's a cheap get out of jail free card because as you can see from the block clock behind me, it hasn't been too successful. Well, I haven't plugged in my block clock yet. Shocker. Yeah. The block, mythics well, are, dude, maybe it has been. Like, maybe we'd be over 100K. I think we can go to 100K now since you have a blue check. You have a blue check. I do have a blue check. We both woke up to blue checks. Elon, uh, in a act of desperation, has, has gifted anyone with over 2,500 blue check followers uh, the check... They woke up with the check this morning and you can't, you can't disable it. It's just, uh, you can hide it, but you're, you're automatically part of the quote premium. unquote premium package. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to lie. It's perfect case for you. Cause I you use my blue check so privilege to DM people. <laughs> I was like, I can finally DM blue, other blue checks now. You wanted it so badly and you finally had your ability to get away with it without me giving you shit. This is like best timeline for Marty. Like Elon, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. Elon can go fuck himself. This is clearly an act of desperation. I will continue to be Nostra only, but uh, let's all just appreciate that this is the single best timeline for Marty. He gets all the benefits of the blue check. Um, gets to continue using Twitter. I finally get to and, mail you one of these. Uh, I, I can't. I these. can't. I can't give him shit for it. Well, I'm like giving him shit for it right now, but we're gonna I can give him less shit for it. Express mail blue check pin to uh the Bitcoin Park in Nashville, Tennessee. We'll be coming. It should be there. 
Tomorrow's Good Friday. It's Easter it got weekend. Lost. Get it, got, it got lost in the mail. Might get there on Tuesday. It it got lost in the mail. Yeah. Fuck the check. Fuck Twitter. Fuck Elon. Fuck Marty. <laughs> for being incredibly happy about this development. I'm not happy about the development. I am happy that you get your blue check finally. Your pin. And stay humble, stack sets. <laughs> Uh, I like the symbolism of the blue check box being left open. Oh, the box is open. What's the symbolism there? It, I, I don't know. It's it. It's stuck know. open. You like, Pandora's box. You like the symbolism, but it's open. You don't know. Closed. No blue checks for you. In all seriousness, though, it was a bit odd. And I do think it, it does signal a bit of desperation. On Elon's part, because you got to think, us prominent blue checks, <laughs> who did not have the blue check, but had high follower counts. Well, you already kind of had the blue check. No, I didn't. I mean, you had it for TFTC. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a very popular account. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, it's, would, most, it, it's extremely it would, popular. It would not have gotten a blue check for free. That's for sure. Um. <laughs> the uh, it it it's it goes along with the other tactics, right? Like the ad revenue tactics. Like he realizes, like the influencers are the key product he has, right? Because they keep all the lurkers on Twitter, um, and all the views on Twitter, and so it's a cheap way to keep high, you know, quote unquote high value accounts, accounts that keep people engaged on Twitter, um, happy and using the product. Being the product. Being the product, yeah. I did not get a blue check. Weirdo robot in the comments. Elon forced the check onto my inactive account. Let's be clear here. This is a form of aggression, I guess. Elon, if you're listening, I would love to chat with you on Civil Dispatch about this. I'd be very friendly. We can have a great conversation about the future of Twitter and And I won't even bring up Bitcoin. We do, I know you don't like talking about Bitcoin. We don't have to talk about Bitcoin at all. You got really pissed the last time we had to talk about Bitcoin. Yeah. And the Tesla still holds Bitcoin on its balance sheet. <clears throat> Whew, freaks, I'm tired. I'm not going to lie. It's been a week. I've got my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, their children in town on their spring break. It's been fun with the family. Got to give a shout out to the crew at Digital Wildcatters. I went to their Empower conference down in Houston yesterday for the day. Woke up early, hopped in the car, got there around 9 a.m., had some breakfast, had a couple meetings, spoke on a panel, did a podcast, and back to Austin. Uh, the intersection of the energy sector and the Bitcoin mining industry is so much fun to see. It's happening, freaks. And I think this was the third year. That Empower has been thrown. I went to the first year. I missed last year. And obviously was there yesterday. I think the progression that has been made over the last three years between the Bitcoin mining sector and the energy sector is material. People are sleeping on it outside of the Bitcoin circle and small energy circles. And I think it's the thing that makes me most bullish. I mean, we have ETFs. We have Sailor aping in, speculative attacking the dollar. But I think the energy sector is the the silver bullet. Once you get those people incentivized to protect Bitcoin, I think it's game over for the feds. Energy, energy sector and Bitcoin. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah. Interesting topics. I think it's becoming very clear <clears throat> that public Bitcoin miners aren't going to be able to depend on the tried and true tactic of bull markets pass of either raising debt or equity via share dilution to get cash to them by future ASIC orders and just announce, Hey, we bought tens of thousands of ASICs. We're going to plug them in at some point in the future and their stock goes up. That's usually how it worked. I think it's becoming clear that that's not going to be the case moving forward. Yeah. Got to actually run a good profitable company. That returns 
value to shareholders at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, maybe eventually. Yeah, it's already happening. I mean, you see, if you look at the mining stocks the last six months, significantly underperforming Bitcoin. Well, a lot stocks. of that's like the rotation with the ETFs. Now they have some competition on the ETFs. We're not really in like a full-blown bull market yet. I think, um, yeah, I mean, market participants can be fucking idiotic during bull cycles, and I kind of expect the same to happen still. Um, clearly, you know, some of the large public miners uh, have a few screws lo loose still. I mean, we saw Marathon this week uh, orchestrate a whole block so that it would be displayed a certain way on mempool.space. Uh, you know, talk about priorities. Uh, so I think uh, we still have a long way to go. I mean, Marty, me and you watched that shitcoin video before uh, <laughs> we went live. <laughs> And uh, we'll we'll spare the freaks with the actual video, but I mean, do you really think like shitcoin degeneracy is behind us? Uh, yeah. Fiat degeneracy is behind us. Like to me, that's like a bit of a peak clown world kind of call. Um, I mean, one of the no, largest public don't. miners just came out of bankruptcy. <laughs> like, do you think they learned anything? Corsi. I hope they did. <laughs> Here's the Mara block. It's literally. Only because of how mempool.space displays transactions in the block and their fee burden is how this was looks like uh, their logo. They literally prioritized their transaction construction, their block construction, their fucking business on how a how the best block explorer in the space displays blocks. Yeah, I think I've read a thread that by constructing the block in this way, they maybe missed out on $20,000 worth of transaction fees that they could have otherwise mined if they weren't trying to be funny or flashy with this block construction catering. And like Matt said, specifically to how mempool that space designs their website. Like if mempool was to go in and change like the pixel structure or the grid, the yeah, it was dimensions just like of the grid. It one move. line change. Yeah, it would look completely nonsensical, but somebody made a good point. $20,000 foregone in fees, but this is a pretty good, we're talking about it now. This is like a $50,000 ad read that that Mara is getting just from this coverage. I mean, they're not really, it's not really an ad read because Mara can go fuck themselves and no one should buy their stock. <laughs> it's like an anti ad read, but yes. <laughs> I mean, with shit corners, it's really, I mean, they're like, prioritizing shit corners in their business they have their new transaction accelerator where it's 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 for shit corners specifically um so yeah i mean i i think this is probably a profitable endeavor for them at least short term uh but it does make you question their long-term priorities yeah yeah they, that was a big thing at the conference as well they <clears throat> They released the prototype, I believe. I don't even know if it's a prototype, but they announced these two-phase immersion system that's in a um, sealed container. And really pumping that as, like, we're innovative and we're going to be more efficient. But if you look into, like, the CapEx to build that immersion system, it's really expensive. And, again, it's like Flash. Going back to the point earlier... And yes, I agree there will be some irrational exuberance in terms of equity valuations for some of these just, companies. Just a little bit? Just a little bit. But, just, a, just a tiny bit? But you mentioned the ETFs are there. So like, I think this is, I would say, the smart miners who are really thinking about building long-term sustainable businesses are internalizing the fact that we're in a new paradigm because people have options in terms of how they get exposure proxy Bitcoin exposure in equity markets. Historically, it was only mining companies. And then MicroStrategy has become more pronounced, obviously, over the last year and a half. And now with the ETFs, um, there's more options. And so the tried and true method of raising cash, announcing ASIC purchases, and then basically expecting your stock price to rise off of that PR is not going to not going to move the needle moving forward. You're going to have to actually, again, 
provide significant profits that go back to shareholders and a business model is actually sustainable because the <laughs> ASIC hamster wheel of just buying ASICs and plugging them in is not profitable uh, long term. And you mentioned like, Corsi, like they went bankrupt because I, they played that game to a certain extent and got blown out. Yeah, and they still have shareholders. I hope you're right. I uh, I just think you're not. I think it's a question of timing. I, I don't think we've... Uh, I think there's going to be... I, we're in the fucking early innings of this bull cycle. It's like not the game hasn't... It's the game still hasn't even started yet. Where it's the day before the fucking game. It's not even the first inning. And there's going to be like pure degeneracy as is tradition. And this time with way bigger numbers. Um, also as is tradition. So... We'll see how it plays out. And and by the way, I saw a bunch of bad takes about how like Stratum V2 fixes this marathon thing. Like Marathon yeah. is a large hasher. They have a, their own mining pool that they control. Uh, Stratum V2 is great. It's 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 going to bring a lot of improvements to miners around the world. It's but not it the has panacea absolutely... people are marketing it to be. And it's completely irrelevant to what Marathon wants to do uh, over here in their in their situation. Yeah, they... They have enough hat straight to. They have their own pool. Yeah. And strategy too, like you said, I mean, it's on the list. Might as well cover it. Um, right now, I think the SBI is that what they're calling it? Version one of it has officially launched. Um, what are we calling it here? Read more. Strategy two reference like implementation the... SRI. Version 1.0.0 has been released. Next generation mining pool designed to enhance the efficiency, security, flexibility, and decentralization. SRI is fully open source community developed independent than any single entity aiming to f be fully compatible with Stratum V2's specification. Can now run this. Stratum V2 has many incredible benefits. One that I think may be the most important but is the most underappreciated is yes. the encrypted... The en crypting of the data when it's going from an individual miner towards a pool historically that data has not been encrypted and so it creates the possibility for hash rate jacking man in the middle attacks um, for pools or other actors this is the to... single biggest improvement and no one really talks about that part yes um it's also the easiest part to implement yeah. which is good yeah so the the fact that this data is now encrypted really reduces the man in the middle attack risk that has existed historically uh, between individual miners and the pools that they point their hash rate at. <laughs> As we've been talking for many years about this, and I'll put my hand up, I probably over-pumped this aspect of Stratum V2 throughout the years, but over time, I've really come to have a nuanced take on it. Individual miners within a mining pool will be able to construct their own blocks, which is a great thing. Right now, the pools that aggregate and buy hash rate from individual miners, they are in control of block construction. They pick which transactions go into the block, and then they broadcast that transaction with Stratum B2. Individual miners can now construct their own blocks and then give it to the pool. Um, why I said it's not a panacea, because while individual block construction is certainly a step in the right direction, at the end of the day, once you hand that block to the pool, the pool still ultimately has to broadcast that transaction. No, miners can broadcast directly, I, I believe, in some situations. Can they? I've been corrected on that. By who? But I, I think there's a bigger issue by the miners. The miners can block, broadcast the block. Who corrected instead you Instead of that? the pool. Uh, Steve Lee. Steve? I mean, I didn't, I should have verified myself. But anyway, okay, I think the, the bigger... newly implemented pool fallback functionality ensures that if a pool rejects a miner's template, the miner's job de declarator client automatically switches to an alternative pool. Miners can configure no, So it doesn't really solve that, it just allows you to the quickly bigger try and issue... change pools to have them broadcast. But the time dilation the, of that is a big problem. The, the biggest, the bigger issue, which I still haven't heard a good answer to, is. Uh, the idiot miner problem where you have a miner that is is not optimizing for transaction for fees. fees in a high yeah. transaction fee environment so like a, just a miner that's not constructing profitable blocks the most profitable blocks for the rest of the miners in the pool and then the second thing is what if the individual miners taking out of band fees 
and and not sharing them with the rest of the pool. There's no way to enforce that. What's the likelihood of that? Though? You're just why? What, what I mean, incredibly likely. If there's money, if there's money to be made, someone's gonna fucking do it. But You're what's just the probability like, that an individual miner would actually produce? But you realize, like, people are saying that Stratum V2 solves the problem of a mining pool taking out of band fees and and not sharing it with the rest of the miners and instead you're allowing the 10,000 miners that are that are mining with you to all be potentially doing it instead of one person but how would you coordinate that right like let's say I'm a miner with 10 miners pointing at a strat and v2 no compatible. if you're a small miner you can't but let's say you're like 25% of the pool or something it's just not a panacea it's good it's an improvement I really, I still. I'm trying really, to think of like how long would the person looking to get that transaction mine be willing to wait? Because that's like where even if they're 25 percent of the pool. I still really like. It would take a few days at least to find the it. left, the left, the left side of the bell curve idea of simply having a nonprofit entity construct the most profitable blocks. I agree, and I agree. that's verifiable. Like that, you could actually verify. You could you could be like this block is the most profitable block it could be, based on on chain fees, known on chain fees, not out of band fees. I agree. Like that's agree. doable. You could someone can spin that up in a month, two months. No, we've talked about this in the past too. That's and it's the creative solution to this problem, which many have approached from a technical perspective, up to this point. Which I'm gonna. I, I want to make it clear. Like, I'm very happy that Stratum V2 exists. I want to thank everybody that's worked on it thanklessly Same. over the many years that it's been talked about and iterated on. This is a big event for the Bitcoin mining world. Um, so thank you to everybody who's been working on this. Thank you to Spiral, Matt Corallo, Brains Team, uh, Foundry. Everybody's Pavel contributed Next. to this. Pavel Next, everybody. Um, Pavel's done a lot of work for this. It's a massive step forward. We're just being a couple stick in the muds now, just to keep everybody's expectations in line. And we're just, I we're just, you know, talking it through. Yeah. There's no solutions. There's only trade offs. Yes. Always. And that's why I think the legal solution is very creative. Where if you can go the not, let's say I think it's out of the box thinking. Like everybody's been like, "What's the technical solution to this?" It's like, well, maybe there's a legal way. Nonprofit does nothing. Doesn't make a profit. Just Mine's the most profitable. Doesn't custody Bitcoin. Doesn't make a profit. Simply coordinates, constructs the blocks. Boom, done. Yeah. Most profitable blocks. Yeah. Listen. I think it, it, it could actually get a decent amount of hash, too. I think there's a lot of miners that would choose to mine with that pool. Yeah. I do, too. Who doesn't want the most profitable blocks? Yeah. And if you have... The legal shield of hey, this is a non non profit, like non profit, just... non custodial. <clears throat> Done. Think about it. Who will build it? Who will build it? Who will build the pools? I want to give a shout out to everybody that was at Empower. Got to see Steve Barber. Got to see the Giga team. Got to meet James Hillard in person for the first I love, time. I love those gentlemen. Everyone who was named. Brains guys. I actually didn't talk to any of the brains guys. I saw them walking around though. <laughs> That's kind of Armstrong. Weird. Tom. Just shout, shouting out that you saw them. Christian, I saw you from far away. I didn't get to you didn't do to you hi. didn't do the stop and chat? I didn't do the stop and chat. Wow. I, I was busy. I was that was I will say I like how I handled yesterday. It was very efficient. I woke oh up at five AM. Got in the car at five thirty. I was in but, Houston by eight forty five. Quick breakfast. Straight to a meeting. Straight to a panel. Straight to a podcast. I, no one cares. Congratulations. Read Clark Moody's dashboard. <laughs> oh, I see someone in the comments asking about the 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 new Citadel hat, the new dispatch hat. Um I just placed an order for a hundred. We're gonna do a limited edition, a hundred only. Uh, cause they're kind of expensive and it's like a four to five week lead time. So hopefully I'll have them in a month. 
Um, so yeah, I'll keep you updated. Yes. But yeah, limited edition, hundred only. I, I only ninety nine left. I cleaned one already. Yeah, Marty gets one. And so does Logan. Oh, uh, Logan, look at you being lively and uh, adding adding some subjects to the list to talk about. I love it. On top of it, best producer in Bitcoin, Logan. Now let's go to Clark Moody's dashboard. Current price of Bitcoin is seventy thousand seven hundred eighty. Cuck bucks, one cuck bucks going to get you 1,413 sats. We're sitting right under $1.4 trillion market cap at 1.39. We are only 4.1% below the previous all time high of $73,790, which we haven't seen in 14 days. We are currently at block height 836,701, which means we are 3,299 blocks away. On the next block subsidy having estimated to be on april 19th now all you 420 stands out there actually if it comes into 10 minutes it'll happen on april 20th early in the morning I'm, I, was, I was really hoping for the eclipse to happen during the eclipse but miners just couldn't plug in fast enough thank you uh thank you to the individual in the zap.stream live chat who zapped us and gave a shout out for my efficiency i appreciate you recognizing my efficiency <laughs> i love that clark uh, moody's teeny <laughs> mempool has thirty-three thousand eight hundred and eighty-six transactions in it if we go over to mempool.space we will see that there are currently 108,552 transactions in mempool's mem space uh mem mempool's <laughs> mempool <laughs> mem space the mem space maybe we should think about rebranding it uh getting close to below six figures for the first time in a while and while we're on mempool.space how good does it have to feel to be Wiz, soft simon and the rest of the team seeing president bukele send out the link to mempool.space marathon constructing a block because of the way that they designed their website they built an incredible product and it shows people as well, the go-to well deserved true proof of work yes it is back to clark's mempool god dang it his dashboard his mempool still teeny teeny weeny with thirty four thousand one hundred two transactions in it there are currently ten thousand eight hundred and sixty three point three bitcoin in unspent capacity in samurai's whirlpool that is 769.2 million cuck bucks worth of unspent value that is oh not the end I forgot to mention that we had a difficulty retarget yesterday. That was a negative difficulty adjustment of negative 1%. Take this data with a grain of salt. We are only 45 plus 16, 61 blocks into this difficulty epoch. Great math. <laughs> blocks have been coming in at 8 minutes and 34 seconds on average right now. The next estimated difficulty adjustment is upward adjustment of 15.8% on April 11th, 2024. But we know since we're only a couple hours into this difficulty epoch, that data is not as reliable as it will be in a week, week and a half from now. So that is the state of the network. That is where we are. Freaks, if you're watching on uh, Twitter or YouTube, uh, the rider dies uh, dwell in our Noster live chat. You can go to rhr.tv slash stream. You do not need to have a Noster account to participate. Uh, the website allows you to just easily make one if you don't have one. The, the freaks and <laughs> speaking of the zap dot stream live chat, I mean, the freaks are asking what my workout routine is. I've been getting back into powerlifting. Been doing a lot more uh, hang cleans, clean presses. <laughs> did, you, did you see dips. what Carlos said? I I have been picking up heavy weights and then putting them. No, back down. the other that's Marty's other end pub. I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're just complimenting yourself. <laughs> I am not. I, I do not have. I do not have the time to do that. Lift heavy weights, freaks. It's good for your health and your mental well being. Anything we want to add to the SBF sentencing?
I would just say that, you know. Um, Tur, do you want to come say hi to the freaks? On Rabbit Hole Recap? We got Tur Demeester breaking into. There, <laughs> there's there's a lot of people at fault for SBF. And you can speak it to the mic. The oh, okay. FTX Ponzi. And, hey, uh, uh, sorry, I was just uh, asking um, 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 if, if, if uh, you were in a call. I can't see you. <laughs> Apparently we're live or something. We're live. We're yeah. live. You can put right on the up, headphones. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're live. No one can see you though. This is what happens at the Bitcoin Commons. You get. We were just talking about SBF's uh, sentence. Twenty-five years. Is that enough? Is it too little? Oh hey Matt. Oh what up, Tur? Hey <laughs> you from you calling from Nashville? Yes sir. Uh huh. From Bitcoin Park. Cool. Um. You mean talking about Ross? No, no, no. Um, SBF. SBF, yeah. What a fuck up. I mean, I, I, I don't really know. I guess, I mean, 25 and then he can get off on parole probably. Yeah, he'll probably get off for like 20 years with parole. I don't know. I mean, I was thinking about the comparison with Ross and uh, I posted something about it and somebody brought up the murder for hire charges against Ross and I was about to ask, like, has anyone... I I haven't done like any in depth research. Into sure they it was dropped entrapment. those. It was they entrapment. dropped those charges. Yeah, that had nothing to do with uh, Ross's bullshit sentence. Right. I mean, it was used. It was used as part of the narrative to. And it know, worked. I mean, like so many people it. still feel like he's, you know, like they don't have to talk about the fact that he created this market for illicit substances because he's a murder for hire guy. Tur, you're aware this is a podcast, right? Sorry, I'm I'm crashing you guys' party. <laughs> no, no, I told no, you no. I just I just want to be clear because someone in the comments is thinks you think this is just a Zoom call, so I just wanted you to be. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I see your face on the monitor, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have like two thousand people listening to our conversation. Oh my god! So I want you to be, I just want oh boy! You to be aware. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I'm only asking questions. <laughs> we have one um, question for you. In the live chat right now, Tur mentioned slow capital yesterday and its impact on human culture. He loves that phrase. It wasn't really a question. It yeah, a... it came up uh, on our Bitcoin Urbanism event. Some people started mentioning that word, uh, maybe Austin to now, actually. And uh, I mean, yeah, that, that's how to fix our cities is we need patient capital. Yeah. It's it's cool. It's it's getting out there, the word. Yeah, it is. Slow capital. Bitcoin gets us back to sound money, being able to lower our time preference. Yeah. And get away from the fiat standard. Um, I don't want to. I don't want you to feel forced to sit here and talk. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to, but I also like. I, do you yeah. want to do business on air? Do you have to ask me a question? Um, we do business on air a lot on this show. Uh, it. I mean, I'm. I'm. Yeah. I mean, I, I will ask you. I want to do a little more. Be a little more professional with my own podcast setup. So I was gonna ask oh. you about that. So I. I will. Matt, what do you what do you recommend for podcast? Well, I, we can't ask Matt. He never has good Wi-Fi. He doesn't care about his camera quality. Dude, I have amazing internet right now. And I came all the way to Austin and we were using a mobile hotspot because you guys had no internet over there. So. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Don't cast stones from your glass room. There was a there was a two hundred and fifty person conference. Everybody's on the Wi Fi. You can't you can't blame that. Your hard line wasn't even working for whatever reason. We couldn't troubleshoot. The whole setup was working perfectly the day before for start of day. <laughs> was this a pled lab? Did they they try to see Marty never takes for. personal responsibility. For they tried to sabotage the, the only thing that broke was the commons, to... the commons Wi Fi. I tried to connect on my phone too. Immediately tries to blame it on the Austin friends down the street instead of, of taking it. Worked, it worked on the pleb lab day, yeah, yeah, it, was, it, was, it didn't work on RHR day. It seems like some sabotage. Tur, thank you for yeah. joining. And I'm sorry, I forced you anytime, that. anytime. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Uh, see you all in the chat. <laughs> Pleasure to see you. Give it up for Tur Demise, everybody. We'll get uh I'll get you the we'll get you the quality podcast set up as well. Awesome. All right. This is why the Bitcoin comments is awesome, you know. You get this happening. There we go. Uh, fuck SBF, fuck Barry, free Ross, free Assange, next topic. Uh well Julian what I was Assange saying, is the next topic, so we can't yeah, just what I was saying that. before Tur walked in is like a lot of people enabled the FTX Ponzi, including like mm -hmm. Tom Brady. So, um, <laughs> I, I would like David, to he's getting it. away scot free. 
I mean, Larry, at least, like, he got paid to tell people not to use it, which, you know, <laughs> somehow he pulled that fucking off. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think in, is, as is the case with, with many scams that happen in this industry, unfortunately, is that the overwhelming majority of participants that enable the scams um, just, you know, slowly, they do like the Simpsons back into the hedge meme and you know they get very little brand damage off of it and they r remain prolific in the space very and, little brand you know, damage but a lot of brain damage and this was like yeah i mean our record speaks for itself our, our incredibly public record speaks for itself but uh, i don't want to hear the bullshit like no one could have seen it coming um and yeah, we all see it coming. and and same with block five same with celsius and same with barry's you know fucking ponzi scheme that he was running over there too yeah no i um i mentioned brain damage on top of brand damage because one of those people who not sbf but craig Wright. i'm not sure if you've seen this i know you're not on twitter even though you now have a blue check but you see ryan next charles dude remember that dude yeah the bald guy from reddit yeah <laughs> did, did you did see he what he did no what did he do this time he, ca he came back and apologized saying like hey i got scammed i got completely duped by craig wright oh i, I was completely that's... duped he did that and then two days later he launched his own shit coin uh... <laughs> satoshi what's he calling it satoshi's uh i remember when he first became a bitcoiner and he was like high up at reddit and everyone got really excited about it and he was just a miserable disappointment yeah, he's um... building a new blockchain based on the writings of satoshi nakamoto Pseudo Carlos, uh, I didn't do my year in review on what Bitcoin did because uh, Peter said he was too tired and and that that people wouldn't care that if I was on the show or not. So I was canceled on. I was in the studio. I was ready to rip, and I got canceled on. I didn't even know this. Yeah, it's true. Peter, disappointing. Very we'll disappointing. record. We'll record again at some time. Sometime soon. This is back in January. Makes sense. If you're going to do a year in review, <laughs> March seems a little late. It's almost April. Yeah, I'm aware. I'm I can't aware believe it's almost April. Calendars. It's almost April. Julian Assange granted the right to fight his extradition to the U.S. UK High Court ruled that Assange can't immediately be extradited to the U.S. on espionage charges and a partial victory for the WikiLeaks founder. If the U.S. provides the requested assurances by April 16th, a second hearing could be held on May 20th for the court to consider whether to grant an appeal. Somewhat good news? I mean, way better than expected. Yes. Uh, but, you know, I it, it feels like this is just mostly bullshit. I don't know. Uh, not a lawyer, definitely not a British lawyer. Um uh, but we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I I had a very low bar for you know how the U.S. and governments that are allied with the U.S. and in bed with the U.S. have treated him so far. So um, this does seem you know incredibly positive compared to the to the shit that they put him through so far. But I. I it it seems to me like what what the U.S. government just says like yeah we we assure you and then take him anyway right. We'll see. They have until April sixteenth. If anything, things have been ex extended. Nothing will be determined till May twentieth if the U.S. is able to provide those assurances. So they're all pretty buddy buddy. The U.S. and the U.K. governments, you know, Five Eyes is that what it's called? Five Eyes. Yeah, there's a five well, eyes and the nine US, eyes. UK, New Zealand, Australia, Germany. Who's the fifth in that? Canada. Did just, Canada. Did you just say Germany? Yeah, Germany. Yeah, but then there's the nine eyes, and then there yeah. it's there's a lot of eyes. A lot of eyes. Too many eyes. I don't know I'll if keep... that's correct. Yeah, I don't know if Canada's in it. I don't know. Whatever. They're all spying on us. They're all working against us. Julian did nothing wrong. No. 
It did not. And another example, we're just talking about Ross Ulbricht and the entrapment with the murder for hire claims that were ultimately dropped by the court, but nonetheless have besmirched the reputation of Ross Ulbricht after his conviction for the Silk Road and not the murder for hires. People still think that's why he's in jail. He's not. But similarly with Julian Assange, there was some bunk case about a rape that they pushed on him for many years. And well, that's when they got him out of Sweden. And then as soon as they got him out, then they dropped it. Yeah. They played dirty tricks. Always, always has been. And you know what? It's projection because they're doing what they're claiming that these freedom fighters are doing. Did you see? They got, they got the black Jeffrey Epstein. (laughs) They got him. They didn't get him yet. He's still on the run. Really? They didn't arrest him after all, all the news? I think they, he's in the I Caribbean. He's hiding. At, he, he fell back to the island. He's in the Caribbean. I mean, people like... Fuck Diddy, man. If you would have told me, like, 10 years ago, that Sean P. Diddy Combs was the black Epstein, I would have been surprised. You put on really? a good public persona. Yeah, no, I didn't. I mean, I feel like it was. I I was surprised. <laughs> I mean, when my wife told me that they raided his house, I was like, for Tupac and Biggie, right? Like, I thought that's what the reason was. He's always been sketch. Yeah, a little sketch back then. Definitely. I mean, what's coming to light now? I went down the rabbit hole. Black Jeffrey Epstein. Black Jeff. I mean, it's bad. All the like, Hollywood pedo elite stuff that has been trickling seems to be real. Uh, the stuff that, I mean, if you look at the videos of him and Justin Bieber when Bieber was like 15, it's like, oh, wow, that dude got that dude got taken advantage of, abused, most likely. <laughs> He's, That's not funny. It's not funny, but it's uh, probably true, which is fucked up. It's crazy. Like all these celebrities, these people that we put on the pedestal, have probably been sexually abused at some point in their life um, by people blackmailing them to push certain narratives and certain music. Is this the Great Awakening? We got an eclipse coming in like ten days. Are you people are saying it's the Great you? Awakening? It's like the good versus evil goods beginning to like come out. That's what I'm hearing. Do you think like the the eclipse is the end of the world? I've heard that one. No, I don't think so. It's the it's the beginning of the age of Aquarius, the Great Awakening. <laughs> This is the age. I know. That's all I could think of when you said that. (laughs) I mean, if you. I'm pretty excited about the eclipse is dope, freaks. Like, try and get under totality. Like, getting under the actual. It's going over the United States. It's going over Austin. Yeah. We had one last year. We had one like six months ago, though. That had totality. Not a full eclipse. Logan's shaking his head. I wa- I looked at it. I had the glasses and everything. I looked up. No, the no the beauty of totality is you don't need glasses. Oh. And I was just about to give te- like Texas got a great stimulus package. They have like four major cities that are getting hit by it. it's like Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. Um, maybe there's a fourth city. Maybe I just said maybe there's three cities. But get under totality. Like there's a big difference between being ninety nine percent versus a hundred percent. Um, the last time we had the opportunity for totality was when Trump looked up without the glasses. <laughs> Remember that? Uh, it was like four years ago or five years ago. It's really cool. It's like the whole night, it just turns into complete night. And it, and then f- for like four minutes, three minutes. Four, four minutes? minutes it's like daylight again. Is it ominous? It's really fucking cool. The bugs come out and shit. Like I got under totality four years ago. It was really funny because it was like uh, we rented a house in South Carolina or I think it was South Carolina. And I got like a great fucking deal for it right under totality like we didn't have to leave the house and uh afterwards afterwards like in the nicest southern charm ever like you know like airbnb you can do uh the private note to the renter like not the one that's left in the review uh the woman who owned the house was like in like the the super most nice southern way possible was like you scammed me like i'm aware you scammed me because i gave you such a good price on this i didn't realize the eclipse was happening (laughs) If I'd, have like known, a, if I'd have known, so I'd have charged you a bit more, but good on you. She's like, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you had a pleasurable totality. 
It's because it was like a college game day house, you know, it was like for, so like there was no football game that weekend. So she had it super cheap. You got me this time, but I, I'm going to keep my eyes on for the next totality <laughs> eclipse. I and I so will I'm be jacking it up. I'm not gonna I lived in Charleston, South accent. Carolina for five years, so I have the right to do an accent. It's not. Um, not racist? No. I had a southern twang myself. What's up, y'all? <laughs> Pseudo Carla. No. You guys aren't liking the, the accent? Shut up, weird robot. Weirdo All right, next robot. to Weirdo Robot. That's what the EU is to vote on the new draconian AML package for service providers on April 22nd. There has been a lot of confusion around this. We talked about it briefly last week. It's There's intentional of... confusion. Well, so, yes. So, the, the this assumption is what that happens I'm running when you with... get When you get your news from engagement accounts on Twitter, you are going to be constantly misled because they get more engagement as a result. Is Lola Leets one of those? No, of course not. Yes. So... Uh, what we talked about last week was I was going off Lola Elite's Lola coverage of this law, which makes it seem like it's going to be hard for centralized exchanges to interact with non-custodial wallets without some information sharing beforehand. And then we reported that. I tweeted it. Many people were running with that narrative then some journalists came out it's like oh you, you can't trust these people they're not right like this is not happening and then this week tony from mutiny shares some information that mutiny wallet's been blocked by some but European that's not, Union. it's not but it's not related to this fucking law it's not no this law doesn't even if they vote yes on it, it doesn't go into effect for three years then why is mutiny getting blocked because people run cuck businesses all over the world. You know, Bottle Pay was doing fucking shit fucking two years ago with no laws. So what's our stance Coinbase, on this? Coinbase, on this? Coinbase sells surveillance software to the U.S. government and other governments. And there's no law requiring them to sell surveillance software to those governments. Look, I mean, it's not great. And the EU regulatory environment is fucking horrible. Uh and and these corrupt regulators and these corrupt politicians are incredibly short-sighted um and and it's it's horrible for their countries it's horrible for their citizens it's horrible for people that want to run businesses there um and unfortunately like this is the trend we we see this stuff going in and people should be concerned about it but also like if an engagement account says that it's like shit like bitcoin is getting banned tomorrow they get way more engagement so like a lot of the shit that we've seen be issues with corporate media, like we see the same issues happening, but even more extreme with quote unquote independent media, influencer media. And it's really hard to get good information and separate the, you know, the signal from the noise. But at the end of the day, like, I think, I think for a lot of us, this doesn't change much. Like you want to self custody, you want to run your own node, you want to use your own node. You want to learn how to use the actual fucking tools in a freedom oriented way. Um, and maybe this lights a fire on your ass. Maybe, maybe for some people, you know, they weren't that motivated to and, and, and they should be. Yeah. I've got um, a tweet. I want to pull up with that in mind and we can come back to this real quick. Pull up the Jay Bedick tweet. It seems that Google has made it very easy for you to copy and paste an address into their search bar and give you information on that ad address and uh, just using what Matt just said as a reason to bring this up to highlight that you should run your own node and run your own locally hosted mempool.space instance and use that to look up anything related well, to your address. Look, obviously, if you're using mempool.space, you're trusting mempool.space. Um, we are both incredibly close with Wiz and their team. I know for a fact they're not logging, but there's no way for you to verify that. Okay. I mean, so the only way for you to know for sure that you're not trusting anybody is to not fucking trust anybody. Um, but I wouldn't like squarely name them. I mean, I think if you're no, going to look I said, up your address I said if anywhere, 
I said, you should you should... look it up on mempool.space because yeah. I know it's the one place I know for a fact isn't logging your information. No, I was trying to give um, actual advice to what you were just saying. Like if you want to eliminate any data leaks, run your own node. And then since mempool.space is also an open source project, run your own instance and interact with your uh, own Yeah, hundred percent because instance. you have the ability to do that. But like yes. you also need to learn coin control, self-custody, collaborative transactions, like all this shit, all the shit that we've been talking about for the last five years. And so like if you're new, if you're new to the show, like you might be a little bit frustrated with me uh, that I don't seem to have much patience for this. But I have a lot of patience for this. Like we've been talking about it for fucking six years every week. Um, and a lot of people have flamed us for it throughout the years. And we've dealt with those those flames. But I'm in a new chapter. Personally, I'm in a new chapter of my life. I'm in the fuck you chapter. And I I. What, what's what been said has been said. It needed to be said. Uh, there's been ample warning. And honestly, I love Jay, but Google allowing you to fucking put an address in and, and see the balance does not change shit. Like, it was all there already. You could have done it in mempool.space. You could have done it at blockstream.info. You could have done it on the countless block explorers. There's fucking chain surveillance mercenary firms that are actively tracking people's transactions. Um if this wakes up a few more people, then that's that's a boost. But Bitcoin is not private by default. And uh, you're leaking a lot of information if you're coming in through KYC services that ID you um, because they have your ID information and they have your transaction information. And uh, that's what's used uh, as the base of the probability analysis that's used to track Bitcoin transactions. Beware, freaks. Beware. We're already on the software updates. Already. We'll read the top four boosts from last week's rip before we get to those. And I've got I've got a macro topic we should talk about too. We'll do that after the software updates. Rabbit will recap two ninety seven. Hold on to your suits. Top boost. Such a good name. From Reed BTC. A hundred and 11,000 sats. If you are listening to RHR and are within driving distance of Northampton or Springfield, Mass., how are you not a member of the Western Mass Bitcoin meetup? Social meetups at a bar in Northampton, educational meetups in Springfield with free beer, water, and seltzer, beginner or ride or die, all are welcome and benefit from in-person meetups. Join us for our having party at 7 p.m. on 420 in Northampton, free food, prizes, and other Bitcoiners to celebrate with. Perfect time to join. They don't go check out the Western Mass Bitcoin Meetup page, which I assume is on meetup.com or Flockster. They didn't put a location in the booth, so you just gotta <laughs> go to Springfield Mass or Northampton at seven PM and look for look for the meetup. Just walk around, just be like, Bitcoin <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around Northampton. Try not to draw attention from the police. At Eric nine nine. 50,000 sats. Stay humble. Stack sats. Let's fucking go. Great advice. Ride or die freak. KD. At KD boosted 35,000 sats. They always start with the quads. No doubt. A lot of people like that. That joke. Uh, it's I, true. Think I, I think I saw one of the surveillance satellites being launched uh, Tuesday. Yeah. No, Monday night. Monday night. It might Monday have been night. one of the space lasers. We uh, we were coming back from Matt's El Rancho here in Austin, Texas, and I looked out my window, and I saw the rocket like where it like breaks up, and then the rocket's red about. glare. Yeah, the bombs bursting in. A... Just uh, Elon's uh, swarm spy satellite network. Uh, nothing yeah, I saw it hit here. the. I saw it hurt the hit the firmament and blow up. And never make a pass for a it. At Pringle Stacks. Like even if the earth even if the earth is flat, Elon is still spying on you. Let's be clear here. Yeah, it's just like uh sub firmament <laughs> surveillance drones that you're supposed to believe are satellites. I I pick my battles. Just even if you're a flat earther, Elon's still spying spying on you. Just keep that in mind. Yes. At Pringle Stacks, twenty two thousand. 222 sats, twos across the board. Palindrome boost. Bekele smash buying treasure. 
treasury backed Bitcoin on the shitter and Elon servicing the quads. LOL. Priceless. Never change legends. We won't. Still. Yeah. There was some good Bukele sitting on the toilet smash buying Bitcoin memes that I saw <laughs> on that on Oster and uh, on Twitter. Yeah, I mean this show is live and unedited if you freaks haven't <laughs> noticed. <so. laughs> Freaks in the zap.stream live chat waiting for the come rocket boost. It didn't come last week, unfortunately. Come Damn, rocket I hope did he's not all come. Right. <laughs> Maybe, Someone send help. I think he hit the firmament on Monday. Maybe that was what <laughs> what I saw. That's fucked up. Come rocket hit the firmament. He's no longer. Don't wish for a, a rocket crash <laughs> with come rocket inside. <sighs> R.I.P. Come rocket. Back to the list. Software updates. As we mentioned, Stratum V2 reference implementation SRI version 1.0.0 has been released. Phoenix D, Phoenix for server, has been released. This is badass. Yes. This is really cool. It's um, minimal specialized lightning node designed for developers and businesses that make it easy to send and receive lightning payments without compromising on self-custody. It's just like Phoenix for mobile, except it runs on a server. Yeah, I mean, that was a really good description. They wrote a great description. Uh, this is always on, as opposed to on mobile, you have the issue of of receiving, right? You you need to open the app to receive uh, Bitcoin. Uh, but obviously, if it's running on a server, you don't have to deal with that. I think this could be a really compelling trade-off balance for a lot of businesses and other individuals that are doing a lot of transactions. I mean, a lot of podcasting 2.0 hosts, for instance... Um, use custodial wallets to re receive their podcasting 2.0 streams like this, I think could be a perfect fit for them. Uh, clearly better than uh, using a custodial wallet, uh, both from a trust perspective and from a regulatory risk perspective. Um, so I think this is really cool, really compelling. I do have these guys rarely speak publicly. They just build, 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 ship, ship, ship. I have the Phoenix Wallet CEO, Pierre Marie, coming on sale dispatch on Tuesday at, at uh, 1700 UTC. So you should consider Let's joining go. us in, in the live chat for that because uh, I'm really excited for it. And these guys, like, I say this about Craig Raw a lot, right? It's like there's there's certain people in the space that if they weren't building stuff, we'd be just huge step back in terms of actually using and relying on Bitcoin on a daily basis. And uh, I don't say that lightly. Like Phoenix Wallet is... Has its own trade offs, but man, like it is fucking awesome. Yeah, it really is. This is big. It's lightweight and native. So Phoenix D is compiled to native binaries for Linux, Mac. Yes, weirdo robot. That's 1 p.m. EST, sildispatch.com. But yeah, UTC Maxi, 1700 UTC. Still, still not on the UTC train. It's too confusing. Maybe if we maybe if we save the sun and get rid of daylight savings, I'll be UTC maxi. But until then, it's too confusing. <laughs> too much math. Next up on the list, Blockstream Jade version one point zero point two eight has been released with QR and pin improvements. For those who are unaware, Blockstream Jade is an open source software project with the signing device. So this is software behind the Jade signing device. Beware if you're running Jade, you now have QR pin improvements. Commerce block introduced lightning latch swap protocol for Mercury layer. Latch transfer enables a state coin to be transferred on condition of the successful payment of a lightning network invoice. It can be used for the sale of a state coin UTXO for an arbitrary amount of Bitcoin in a private non-custodial way without counterparty risk. I like this design. As you're moving state chains, move the private keys off chain so you don't have an on-chain fee. Train economic yeah, incentive I mean, to ensure the delivery of it. Makes sense. This state chains is a cool it's a cool concept as currently implemented, uh, because they were able to do it without a soft fork. You are providing some trust in the coordinator. If the coordinator is malicious, um, actively malicious, and is also your counterparty in the swaps, uh, they they can take your money, and it's important for people to realize. But from a regulatory point of view, I think it's um, it should be classified as self custody. It's one of those 
you know, I'm doing quotation marks, self custody options. Um, this specifically, basically, my my basic understanding is that this is like atomic swaps of lightning. Um, so the, the funds don't move uh, unless the lightning transaction is completed. It'll make it easier to go in and out um, of the state chains. Yes. Shout out to Tom and the rest of the team at Commerce Block and Mercury for pushing this. State chains. Been around for a while. They, another example of a team that's just been chipping away. A very niche problem, very niche product, but pushing it forward, pushing releases, innovating. It's great to see. All right, I got this. Manchan Kura. Manchan Kura, version 2.0, to turn feature phones into Bitcoin signing devices. Did you catch that pronunciation? Manchan Kura. Yeah, I think that was pretty good. Yeah. Manchan Kura. I had, uh, I had KG. I had an extra N in there. Manchan Kura? Yeah, there's no A in the first syllable. There's no Machan, N. Machan Kura. Manchan Kura. You say man. It's ma chan Kura. Whatever. Yeah, so it's slang for money. <laughs> it's slang for money in South Africa. Um, I had KG, the founder, on Citadel Dispatch this week. It was a fun conversation. Uh, but basically, he wants to turn the SIM card uh you put a little java card on top of your sim card and it turns your sim card of a regular feature phone into essentially a hardware wallet um which seems quite compelling for people that don't have smartphones and it can be very cheap and still very ux friendly um so that's pretty fucking cool i think yes only question would be is like how Do we feel about re-architecting like a SIM card? Is that secure? No, no. So right now, Manchan Kura is a text-based interface for mm. a custodial wallet. Okay. His plan is when you hit a certain balance to move to on-chain self-custody, and that will be secured by this little Java card that sticks onto an existing SIM card and then you stick it back into your device. Oh. Um, obviously, it's, you know, on the trade-off balance of, of security and trust, uh, it's not, you know, like a cold card or like a a, a purpose, you know, a, 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 a self-done cold storage setup or something like that. But it can be very convenient, it can be very cheap, and it can be pretty secure. And you can just do it in your feature phone that you already have, and you can still use a text-based interface to uh, interact with it. And this is really important. Like When I was, I was in uh, Latin America recently, and I was on 3G, and so many of the wallets, like on a smartphone 3G, so many of the wallets broke. Like they just wouldn't work in that situation. Um, and then let alone, let's say you don't have 3G and you don't have a smartphone. Um, how do you interact with Bitcoin? You know, those people need Bitcoin. So, some of those people need Bitcoin more than people that have smartphones need Bitcoin. Um, how do you do that? And he's, you know, on the ground with those people every day uh, building for them. And it's pretty inspirational and pretty fucking cool, in my opinion. It really is, too. And I like the implementation of these relays which is something we've talked about for a while it's cool to see in a while and it makes the most sense so it's not a it's not a mesh relay right so it's just using cellular data relays <laughs> it's just using your cell phone yeah. yeah but it looks like it relays back to so that's what I'm trying to get to like it relays back to an Electrum server somewhere Sorry, I'm reading through the no bullshit Bitcoin piece now. Yeah, he's running the Electrum server. Yeah. It's all it's all a text-based interface. Yeah. Like you gotta like for us, you gotta like think back like 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I'm um, trying to do. Remember, like you were like be on your Nokia phone or whatever. And like they've improved it slightly or whatever, but it's like one is for balance check, two is for send, three is for receive. You know, like that. 
that's <laughs> that's his interface. It's really cool when he shows you it in person. Like it fucking works. Yeah, I've seen um, videos of it. But right now it's purely custodial, which which uh, obviously comes with rug risk, but it also it, it makes him a regulatory target, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so it's important to try and figure out a self custody way of doing it in a reasonably secure, uh, while still being convenient. And then also like you got to keep in mind on chain transaction fees. Um, because if, if you're storing like $10 on chain or a hundred dollars on chain, like that could get very expensive very quickly. Yeah. Which actually is a good segue into the next update, which is Fetty Bravo, the release of Fetty Bravo you can now use real money on Fetty. Absolutely massive. Congrats. Congrats team. I'm going to, I'm going to give a knock on the wall. Good job, guys. Fetty team is behind me right now. There's there's no one in that room right now. Uh, you want? Let's see. They might come over and they hear me knocking. Yeah. There's no one in that room right now. There are there are two Fetty team members. Logan, do we need to take the camera over there? There's nobody in that room right now. Hopefully, Justin walks in. I'll hold the mic up to the wall. You can hear mufflings of Justin talking in there. But point being, massive release for them. Into that in. Um, so now you can use real money. You can play with Fetty mods, Fetty fun. You can. I downloaded the app yesterday, or a couple of days ago now at this point, and I think I joined the free Madeira, Fetty Mint. Um, and so you can use it, load it up with Sats, and building on the last topic. While I was at Empower yesterday, I actually onboarded somebody to Mutiny's Fetty Mint implementation using this exact example of. How are we going to onboard people cheaply in the future? And I think Fetty Mint is a good trade-off there. Obviously, it's a different custody trade-off with the fact that you're um, depending on a federation of Mint operators to, to custody and secure your funds. It's custodial, but it's, it's multi-sig custodial. Yes. So you need multiple people instead of just SBF to reg you. Yeah. And I was able to have this person download mutiny and Fetty and show them like, all right, I'm going to send you eCash tokens in these mints. Uh, send them a hundred sats, no fee private. If, yeah. Like, you get uh, privacy from the custodians too, right? Like a, yeah. the traditional custodians right now, like a wallet of Satoshi or a Manchinkuda, like they know all your transactions. <laughs> and um, this guy was using wallet of Satoshi before. And I originally, why well, I had him download the apps and actually create a federation not create a federation, join a federation, was because he couldn't produce a hundred sat invoice from wallets of Satoshi for me because he was in the U.S. and they don't allow you to receive anymore. I can only send if you're in the U.S. Apparently, um, that is correct. So, so I was like, "This is bullshit." Download these apps, and I'll show you how I can send you a hundred ESATs. It's cool. Happened in less than five minutes. That's badass. Did he have Phoenix Wallet installed? He did not. Wallet of Satoshi Max. Look, I'm I'm a I'm a Charmian e cash cashew fediment like hyper bull. Uh to the point where I was uh hyping it up so much two years ago that I pulled back a little bit because uh we weren't close to production yet and uh it just felt like more trouble than it was worth. But that said, I think most people that can afford to go to a Bitcoin conference in America should at least, uh, you know, consider like a Phoenix wallet type of trade off balance. Um, where like, you know, it, like Phoenix wallet works really well if you put a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars in it. Um, because of the on chain fees, right? No matter what, you have to have on chain fees if you have an actual channel open. Just a humble one and a half million sets, just load it up. Look, some of us live on Bitcoin. Um, and we have real expenses that we have to pay for in Bitcoin. And for those people, you know, it makes sense to have, you know, a, a, a larger amount, uh, in your, in a spending wallet. Agreed. Agreed. I know what it's like. I know what it's like, but I am, that's actually the one thing, the last question, it was a Q and a question for the panel that I was on yesterday. And that was the question. What's the most overhyped thing? In Bitcoin, it was the most underhyped thing. Since we're at a mining conference, I mentioned trying to, I was the last to go, so I'd like pick, like, all right, everybody picked it. 
a couple of obvious things. I was like Shrine of V2, uh, block template construction being a panacea for censorship problems at the mining pool layers, most overhyped, most underhyped, Chami mints, whether they're single mint operators or Fetty mints. I do think people are sleeping on them. I think Chami and mints, Chami and eCash is like appropriately hyped. Uh, it's beginning to get more hype as more of the products come to market, but still, you know, maybe are, it's my bubble, but yeah, it's our bubble that everybody, I mean, we've seen this. Everybody's asking us like, well, what do you think about the L2 explosions, UK rollups and ordinals? And do you remember rooms? the 1031 investor dinner we had like a year and a half ago that just devolved into like a screaming <laughs> match about Chomini yes. cash? Yes. Yeah. So I guess it's a bubble thing. I think we've been proven right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It was like the end of a three-hour dinner. It's like, chow me knee cash, man. It's the future. <laughs> I still think it is. Shout out to the Fetty team. Massive step forward for them. I know they've been working extremely hard. They're still working right behind me here. Um, there is nobody in that room right now. Logan, I need you to go take a picture uh, and tweet it. Uh, of just don't don't get any computer screens i just want you to get legs no. in the office no and i want you to tweet it and send a nostra note out no no i trust then, uh, I, oh now now you don't now your your bluff's getting called what i was gonna what i was gonna say stepping okay I, do what you want <laughs> don't let me finish my sentence go for it is is he going he's out he's took taking the picture he's posting it to twitter now and nostra I was going to say that I trust Logan if Logan says there's people in there or not and that you shouldn't post, you shouldn't like dox people on Twitter. Just legs, just legs. You're going to know what shoes the Fetty team likes to wear. Is he back in yet? Yeah, Logan went. We'll let him go. Was there anyone in there, go. Logan? You'll see. You'll see. There's one face. You took a face? No, don't post the face. I said feed only. It's a feed. So how do we know if they're on the Fetty now. team? I mean, I'll I'll know if it's his feet or not. There's a Fetty hat. There's a Fetty hat. There's a hat. I'll draw, the I'll draw on the face. No computers. There's no computers. Okay. Can't be leaking. Internal. Nostra only. Don't post it on Twitter. Make the freaks go to Nostra if they want to verify. Be the change you want to see in the world. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Can't believe you have a blue check. Ronan Dojo version 2.1. Fuck you. You are so happy. You are so happy you got your guilt-free blue check. Okay? Uh, God. Ronan Dojo version 2.1.3 has been released with decentralized communication over Sorbonne for Whirlpool coordinator. Yeah, this is what's needed for the... Decentralized coordinator. That we reported on last week. Yeah. Albi extension version 3.7.0 has been released. They now have Safari browser support, NIP 44, and new onboarding flows. What's the status of Albi? Are they geofencing US unless they give up? Some data I stuff. don't. I don't try and stay up to date on the latest in custodial wallet shenanigans. I would say on Noster. I like the Albi Tom. I know shenanigans. It's just look. They're good people. Good people make the mistake of running uh, custodial wallets without a compliance strategy all the fucking time, uh, and I always tell them not to do that, um, and that they're in for a world of hurt, and then. It happens, and it's, it sucks. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I don't use the Albi extension anymore. I never used their custodial wallet. I was using it for Noster. Um, but the No S2X extension by Fiat Chaff is just so much more straightforward. It's literally just the Noster key. It doesn't have a Lightning wallet built into it, none of the other stuff. Um, and it's quite performant. Um, but yeah, I also love the Albi team. I think that's unrelated. Marty, do you, you use Albi's custodial wallet? How do you, how how is it going over there? Did they deplatform you yet for being? No, American? not yet, not yet, <laughs> not yet. 
Yeah, see, you're the Albie specialist in the chat. Are you texting? Are you texting them right now? Just be like, yo, don't delete my account. No, I'm actually looking up Noah's. Fetty picture is posted on Noster. <laughs> I'm on Noah's Two X's GitHub page. Can you can you zap using Noah's? No, 2X? no, no. Yeah. There's no there's no Lightning Wallet. Yeah, that's why I like Albi. It makes it easy to zap because I'm a prolific zapper and I need the ability to do it on the browser. Okay, Marty, easily. zaps are public. You don't zap that much. Okay. <laughs> I've, you make you make up lies. This is just make up. You make up is, lies on Noster. This is egregious. And people, it's amazing. Like people zap you, people repost you. You know, like they they just they just fall right into the ploy. You know, they just they just they they love the bullshit. Look at you! Look at you zap shaming right now. This is disgusting. I'm not zap shaming you. I'm You're just zap shaming right. This is I'm disgusting. I'm speaking my truth. I'm speaking my truth. It's lies. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Marty. Uh, th does that Noster not banned? Does that uh, calculate private zaps? <laughs> you're I do a lot saying, of private zaps. You, Remember not, last no, week when I when I swept when I swept my e nuts, my fifty thousand e nuts, look, and you thought look, I wasn't going to donate look, to Open Sats, but I did. Look, but that Noster, didn't show up in my zap stats. Okay, okay I zapped Noster. it straight Band, to Open Sats. Noster. Band definitely does not pick up all zap, all public zaps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but it's an apples to apples comparison. Like when when Nostra Band says I've zapped eight million sats and you zapped fifty k, like that's apples to apples. Like I've zapped significantly more than eight million sats. It just doesn't track that. But you just you have a long way to go. You have a long way to catch up. I don't how really care, Mark. I'm not. How many zaps not, have you said during this episode? I'm not. I'm not. I do. I'm up to. Get, I'm up to three I, already. I care about the freaks. My phone is on airplane mode. I try not to get distracted during the live stream. I'm focused. I'm focused. That's, I, that I, is, I, that, I is, that is the I, biggest bold face lie I've heard of my I, life. I, I zap people when we're not live. I zap <laughs> that, is, Marty, that, is, oh, Marty. that is a claim right there. <laughs> How many times throughout the years if I had to be like, are you fucking listening right now? Well, usually I'm looking at the live chat, which I think is in line with focusing no, on the stream. Just, no, it, is, it is part of it, right? And look, Marty, I'm not trying to zap shame you. You can zap whatever you want to zap, okay? I... I do, I do question you just bold face lying about being the most generous zapper on Noster. But what I really want to see you do is I want to see you move to Noster only. And I want to see you using Noster first. When you wake up in the morning, you should spend some time with your family first. But before you open Twitter, you should open Noster first. Like that's, that's what I want to see from you. Okay. Um, and I'm not angry. I'm just, I'm just disappointed. That's all. This is this is egregious. <laughs> What's the sign? What's the Seinfeld line? The uh, the lawyer. This is egregious. But dude, honestly, like real talk, I this whole like lovey dovey like Noster doesn't have a rage algo, so like assholes like won't succeed on Noster, and like everyone is like inclined to be nice or whatever. No, it's just early in Noster. Like assholes are gonna fucking love Noster. They're gonna get insane amount of engagement. They're gonna post fucking lies. Um, like it won't be as extreme because there won't be an algo literally designed to boost the extreme. Um, but uh if if you think that's not gonna happen, you're just I, I I hope you're right. I just I do not see it playing out that way. Yeah, I mean one can make the argument that you were being an asshole last week, like trying to zap <laughs> Zap shame me and you're getting a lot of attention. It's, it's on Noster already, freaks. Matt's <laughs> the one perpetrating it. <laughs> Cyberbullying does not exist. And uh, zap <laughs> shaming is not a real thing. And you should zap more. Please. Have you zapped today? Yes. Anyway, freaks, thanks for zapping the show. It really does mean a lot to us. I think we just like since we're talking about cyberbullying. I think we have to pull up the Tyler the Creator quote. Yeah, cyberbullying is not a real thing. <laughs> just sign off. Uh, epic tweet from 2012. Um, Cashew. We, what we need is we need like we need WikiLeaks. We're talking about Assange. We need WikiLeaks on Noster. Like we need more. We need more censorship tests. I want to. I want to poke the hornet's nest on Nostra a little bit. Yeah. 
You know, like Satoshi's famous quote, like was when WikiLeaks was was starting to use Bitcoin after they got cut out of the financial system. And he's like, I don't want to poke, poke the hornet's nest yet. Like it's like we need like Noster will not grow and be as powerful as it's going to be without pressure. It needs it needs real censorship pressure. It can't just be um, rainbows and daisies and hugs. I think the fifth column FBI agents who have access to the Epstein videos blackmail. Just post them on Noster. You test it out. Yeah, post uh, Black Epstein's list. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a long one. It's your break on Noster first. I think everybody's going to be on it. Post it on Noster first. You know, you'll get get zaps. Yeah. We'll see how censorship resistant it is. And, like, to the people that are worried about, like, assholes on Noster, like, that's what's cool about the relay model. Um, like people will have small relays, people will have community relays, people will be able to moderate the curate what they want to do themselves, um, what they want to see themselves, what kind of experience they want to to have themselves. Um, yeah, and I, I think there'll be a lot of different relays with different moderation policies and and different clients with different moderation policies and end users being able to subscribe to different mute lists and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it will be a problem, but agreed. I like to see Nostra be spicier. Look, was that really your first Nostra post in a year? Wow, you're just gonna Nostra shame him like that? I don't post on Twitter either. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> when was it's your last first. Twitter post? Uh, that was in November, I think. Okay, so more, more recent. Th- more recent than his last Nostra post. Yeah. Well, he does. He, I see him active in the Zap stream, which is technically Nostra. I, I do use Noster. I do post on Noster if you count Zap stream far more than Twitter. There you go. Yeah. Ride or die. Those are Nostra notes. They are. They are. Unicorns and Skittles. Next up on the list. Try that on a small relay. Blockstream Jade. Wait, you already read that. I gotta read. This is why I don't like Signal. I always have to go in and like read more, find, find <laughs> well, where if you I have it open on. Re- so then copy and paste it into fucking whatever you want to copy and paste it. In. I'm just gonna send the list on Signal. Your job is to make my job as easy as possible. <laughs> okay, I can't be copy and pasting. I got too much stuff going on. Cashew Nutshell version zero point one five point two has been released. Beautiful thing to see. What's new? Let's the Mint added go. slow API rate limiter. Fake wallet support for USD. Shout out to Cali and everybody else yep. contributing to that. It looks like Cali was the only contributor to this release from, <laughs> from the notes. If, if you haven't listened to my civil dispatch with Cali, consider it. It was a really fun conversation. It was good. And I have the, there's a full transcript there too now. I'm doing transcripts for all the episodes going forward. Transcripts are good. Big fan of transcripts. Hedgehog, protocol for asynchronous layer two Bitcoin payments. Super test net. Prolific. This is pretty cool. Experimenter of things. Yeah, this is uh, really cool. Prolific experimenter of things. You should put that on a business card. Hedgehog is a protocol for two-party <laughs> payment channels. Hedgehog channels are similar to lightning channels, but with a few comparative benefits such as offline receive capabilities I'm not sure exactly how I've read a couple threads on this, but it seems like it's a new type of payment channel with off offline receive, obviously. Um, and it can be implemented today. I believe he said it could be better with op CTV. What are your thoughts? How could hedgehog be implemented? You know, right now it's a really nice HTML page. Um, so hopefully, uh, we see implementation and, and we can play with it in real life. And I look forward to it. Um, yeah. It seems promising. I, my basic understanding is, you know, that uh, it's it's more helpful like in an LSP to user context uh, than it is for like, um, you know, having many channels open with many different peers. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. It seems really cool. 
this seems like you know you know this seems like an actually promising l2 type of innovation as opposed to a lot of the bullshit that we see out there right now yeah so hedgehog is built on a primitive in bitcoin script called revocable connectors to make revocable connectors you need two even more primitive primitives revocable scripts <laughs> and connector outputs and he seems to think that he can build a federated coin pool using this model as well, which would be cool. User experience, fairly similar to eCash protocols like Cashew and Fediment, except with no server. Very interesting. Logan, that's like the most ridiculous photo you posted. Is that actually a Fetty team member? It, it's someone with a Fetty hat in the Fetty office doing something. <laughs> Like, you don't know who the person is? I, I, no. Logan, I said feed only. I mean, definitely does not look like Justin Moon. It's not him, he's on the other side of the room. <laughs> did you see the smiley face he did? Yeah. It's a good cover. Um, yeah, no, it looks, it looks promising. I, I, I'm excited for implementation. Casa launches an inheritance protocol. Inheritance product, excuse me. Uh, this is, uh, you know, good to see. It's good to see. I think, um, you know, back in the day, I launched Final Message. I think it was a little bit ahead of its time. Uh, I want to see more inheritance solutions. I think BitKey can provide something that's pretty compelling. Um, I think Unchained is pretty close to providing something that's pretty compelling. Um, more inheritance options, the better. Yeah. Uh, this this seems pretty graceful, the way they're handling it. They have a six-month delay, basically like a dead man switch. You have six months to be like, I'm not fucking dead. Please don't give it to them. Um it involves an encrypted mobile key to to your air. It works for all their pay models. It's nice that they're not like putting it behind like they're a super expensive membership option. Um, yeah. Because the weird thing about Bitcoin is like your air like adds a tax surface <laughs> because it's like not even like is your air going to steal your Bitcoin, but like is your air going to be compromised? By a malicious individual to take your bitcoin yeah. it's a bearer asset so uh, multi-sig is a key aspect of all the good solutions um i think we might relaunch final message with noster i think i think that could work really well i, like I mean idea. we had such a pain point because we were like what is the messaging protocol and we we're using fucking email it fucking sucked i think it could work really well with noster i've got a morbid take on this okay does this incentivize murder does i mean does life insurance or any kind of inheritance incentivize murder that's a good point i mean you have, if, if you have if, access if there... to the key after six months it's a much easier route i don't know look i think if, but if you, you murder if... you're likely going to get found out that you murdered if, somebody, so. if you think your heir is going to murder you then they shouldn't be your heir ouch like take some personal responsibility right okay yeah, yeah. again we're just exploring all options here like human humanity is like built on trust right like we're trying to build tools that minimize trust as much as possible but like you can never get fully away from some elements of trust that's enough think boy on that topic it's enough think boy uh shout out to the live chat for sneaking this software update in because it was announced after we went live btc pay server version 1.13.0 has been released with new server branding you can invite users via email link new employee manager roles permissions a new point of sale keypad <laughs> item admin can view only stores better bitcoin qr support three new integrations Nop Commerce, Grand Node, and Zen Foro, and two new plugins, Breeze, and bringing XYZ. Excuse me, bring in. Shout out to BTC Pay Server. 
OG open source payment server in the space. The uh, the highlight reel from Bitcoin Atlanta, so people s spending at these point of sale machines, very bullish. Apparently the credit card machines went down. People can only spend with Bitcoin. Yeah, but they also like, I mean, they had the advantage that they had no KYC ATMs that allowed you to buy Bitcoin with card. Um, which I feel like is, is good. Like they should, that is awesome that they offer that. But it skews the stats a little bit. Oh, uh, from buying? Like you're buying KYC. You, like you could show up to the conference, not have any Bitcoin, right? And you could just swipe your card, get Bitcoin, and then pay with the Bitcoin. Yeah. But you swipe the card like 15 minutes before you paid with the Bitcoin. Oops. But I'm not like, that's not trying to diminish it because that's badass. Like people should be able to just fucking swipe their card and get Bitcoin without KYC yeah. besides the card swipe. That was always the dream. The dream is always no KYC Bitcoin ATMs on like every fucking continent. Like you get off a plane, you get some local cash, you take some local cash, switch into Bitcoin, go back and forth. Um, I see a question in the comments. Now that Odell has a blue check mark, will he return to Twitter? No. Did I pay for the blue check mark? No. Can I remove the blue check mark? No. Am I going to delete can you my prove Twitter that you, account? Can you, can you prove that you didn't pay for it? How do we know that you're just not? Because you know, it showed up the day Elon sent out a tweet saying, I'm giving every person that has 2,500 blue check followers a fucking blue check mark. It was the Very same fucking day. Good cover. It was the Good same cover. fucking day. And I will Good continue cover. to be Noster only. And this is a, a desperate move by Elon. Um, and uh, yeah, come join us on Noster. Be the change you want to see in the world. If not you, then who? And I'm not going to hide the blue check either because I feel like that's, they won't, he won't let me remove it. I'm not going to wow. just press the hide button uh, because that feels wrong. I'm just not going to fucking touch the account. Okay. All right. And Elon, if you want to come on Citadel Dispatch, the invite is open. I'll be incredibly fair. We'll have a great conversation. Um, I really just want what's best for Twitter. It's a platform that I used for years. And relied on for years. I wouldn't have met Marty. I wouldn't have met the majority of the freaks without Twitter. Um, I don't think he's gonna. You gotta, you gotta refer to it as and we, for him to come. We don't have to. Get... We don't have to talk about Bitcoin. Yeah, I, X formerly Twitter. Okay. In parentheses. No, if he if he's coming on Rabbit Hole Recap, Joe Curran's coming on Rabbit Hole Recap. Elon's coming <laughs> on Rabbit Hole Recap too. Because I have some firmament questions I need to ask. Uh, no, I think this is a little bit different. <laughs> I have if, some firm if, if, questions that need to be answered, okay? You know, I, I can ask Elon at the end of the dispatch to come on Rabbit Hole Recap. No, I feel no, like, no. no, you're just going to, I can't have you like double teaming me like that. Like it needs to be just like a one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> it needs to be like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm just, I'm being level with you. Being okay. level with you. All right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> last thing on the list. I do got to get going here soon. Or not the last thing. Second to last thing, go That's fetch. Like said you have to go. I'm ready to rip, man. Same. I have to go. I have family obligations. Uh, vulnerability. We mentioned this last week. Um, this is not the last thing on the list. There's one more thing on the list. Isn't there? The other? I've got one Did more I thing I want to add to the list. Oh, go fly. fetch. Did vulnerability in M-series Mac chips lets attackers steal encryption yeah. keys. We didn't talk about this on air last week. We talked about this separately on a call. Um, pretty big deal. Um, so Apple... Their M series chips, M1, M2, M3, have been highly um, praised for their speed and what they brought to Apple users and what they can do on their computers. I have one on this laptop in front of me. I don't really know. I don't know how practical this attack is. It's That's what cool. you were saying last week, but it seems it, I think they need physical access to the device. I mean, so that's not very practical. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to read if, if it requires physical access or if it requires just like any app you downloaded can do it. Well, it is a side um, channel, so maybe you don't need physical. I don't Floss know. It's side hard. channel allowing end-to-end -end encrypted extractions when Apple chips run implementations of widely used crypt 
cryptographic protocols. It's hard for me patched. to tell. I mean, Anybody in the, the other... Now? What? Anybody in the live chat now? No one knows. If you do. We'll find, I will find out in the next couple of months. Just keep your shit updated if you're using a Mac. Um, it seems like the M3s aren't affected. Um, don't install apps if you don't need to. Like keep your machines relatively clean. Try not to do like any kind of like long term Bitcoin, like significant holdings or whatever. Those should be done on a dedicated machine um, that you're not using for anything else. Like don't look at porn on the same machine that you're you're doing long term Bitcoin storage. Don't Marty's about to say, don't look at porn. Um, no, Marty only does his private. That's how Marty knows about private apps because he does it for Noster only fans. Um, no. So I, I forgot to add to the list, but I, I just ninja added it. Uh, Elon selling uh, user data to... Uh, it feels like every week there's another story like this. Um, he, he just gives a pipe of user data directly into law enforcement agencies. Go down um, a little bit. And Intercept got this through uh, Freedom of Information Act. Are you reading this That's, for the first time? It's yeah, weird. It's no one reported up. on this on Twitter. I was not aware of this. Uh, I I put I, I noted about it on my Nostra account. I need to check Nostra more. It's on me. That's on go. me. Hand up. There you go. The one thing I wanted to add is Logan. I will put it in the chat. But another thing that's a bit under the radar. Uh, everybody should be aware of is the fact that treasury treasury issuance is at the same level it was in Q1 of 2020. And why is that important? It's because uh, it's the highest treasury issuance has ever been, and we're not in a global pandemic, global economic lockdown yet. And so, not yet, <laughs> but it is a bit alarming. Well, that uh, the Bidenomics is working, inflation is down, the economy is in better footing, the job market's good, and yet we're issuing more debt than ever before. And so we can pull up that chart in the tweet. Um, pretty significant. So I think when you combine this with the fact that the U.S. government took treasuries out of the leverage ratio required for banks is dictated by basel three um it's not good they're printing a lot of debt and they're trying to create more demand for it so that's what taking treasuries out of the leverage ratio for banks did is it created the ability for banks to buy an obscene amount of treasuries without affecting their their capital requirements and as we know that's what led to the fall of the banks this time last year and so the just making the problem worse. They're printing more of these treasuries, mainly notes and bills, actually. Uh, Marty, supply, lower price. Marty, so they're just going to, they're going to hyperinflate, like print all the money. Yeah, that's fire. Be ridiculous. We're, Man, we're, that's um, the, we're like five minutes past your hard stop, right? Yeah, right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Moscow shooting. What's your take? Uh, was the CIA involved? No was take. The US, I don't is, know. Was I don't it the U.S. government who did it? I mean, it, if it's ISIS, that was a. It was a massive shooting. It was like 150 I know. dead. I know. Like I know. 80 wounded, like 100 missing or something. I don't know. I don't have enough information. If you don't have an opinion, if on we're this going one? with the narrative, it was ISIS. Uh, has the CIA helped? contribute to the construction and arming of ISIS, yes. The U.S. government know. warned about this on like March yeah, 7th like a week or before. March yeah. 8th or something like that. And and the FSB literally was like, the U.S. government's full of shit, like there's no terrorist issues. Like they, yeah. they did like a counter warning. Yeah. Um, and we could have just used the space lasers and we didn't use the space lasers. Feels like it's a little bit messier. Yeah. Well, and then, I mean, you couple that... Well, all right, now you press me on uh, <laughs> this Baltimore Bridge. I've, it was my next question. I was about to hit Reta you. What's your take on the Baltimore Bridge? 
What's could be take? retaliation. Could be competency crisis. <laughs> nah, that, that ship. That ship just fucking hit that bridge, and that bridge was in shit shape. And it just yeah, it folded down. like a. That deck why do we cards. hit the ship with the space lasers? Like, why are we hitting it with the ship? Not enough time. It, like the, the lights went out. I don't know. It, it was not a cyber attack. It was not a cyber attack. It was like a fucking mechanical failure. <laughs> fucking right into the into the post. Yeah, mechanical not a failure. Structural engineer. Yeah, I don't know. Not, I've I've driven. I've 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 drove a boat before. But not a not a container. Not ship. a shipping container. And even in like best case scenarios, you like it's like driving on ice in best case scenarios in like a twenty five foot fishing boat. But I will say that it's like that causes serious issues. Baltimore's like a is is a, that's a serious harbor. Like there's it's, a I think lot it's the of sixth traffic largest that goes harbor. To that harbor. And their traffic was increasing over the last. We have like a bunch of ships stuck there. Uh, there's like naval cargo ships stuck there. Oh, God. It's, yeah, the, the tinfoil hat guy in me wants to be like, they're attacking our infrastructure, but I'm leading competency crisis on this one. It, I don't, dude, it like, I, it, it, like people see like the lights turn on and off and they're like, it, this is proof of a cyber attack. Like it's literally proof of mechanical failure. Yeah, and like, like maybe mechanical has not failure been ma- maintained. Like it's maybe mechanical crisis. failure happened because of a cyber attack, but it's definitely not just automatically proof of a cyber attack. But I, I think this goes. This is the mandibles thesis, right? Which is crumbling infrastructure, uh, overburdened infrastructure, like more and more cargo ships, you know, less and less maintenance. Well, um, stretching everything thin, pushing it to the limit. Let's give it's like straight up mandibles thesis. Yeah. The part of this story that was in competency crisis, let's give a shout out to the bridge operators who heard the mayday call from <laughs> the the ship captain and quickly yeah. moved to stop and prevent cars from going on the bridge. So luckily there was, that was good. not luckily, but the um the amount that, of cars on important. that bridge when it fell was significantly reduced um, because of quick action from the bridge operators. Exactly. That thing folded like a heck a deck of cards. Though. I was like, I've driven over stunning. that bridge. It was stunning how like, just like I've driven over that bridge <laughs> multiple times. It's a, I it was as a, well. It was a beautiful bridge. It was an ugly bridge. It wasn't that beautiful. No, but like the view is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the view may have been, but like <laughs> the bridge is kind of ugly. My grandfather helped build the Walt Whitman Bridge between Philadelphia <laughs> and Camden. That's shout at him. Bridge. Yeah, shout at him. Actually, what Ben Franklin. Sorry, Docs. Poppy. Sorry, Poppy, but Grant. Uh, Ben Franklin's a little prettier. Walt Whitman's a great bridge, though. I don't think I don't I don't think the U.S. government s- sank that bridge. Neither do I. What's their incentive? I'm going competency crisis on that one. Russia. And I like, don't think like the Chinese or the Russians did it either. And to be clear, on the Russia side of things, I have no idea what happened there. I'm not going to pretend. On the Moscow side, the Moscow shooting or whatever. Yeah. I just don't get the I don't get the angle that it was us, but maybe. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I, even Ukraine, like, what does Ukraine get out of, like, shooting up a mall? Yeah. Like, Putin has Putin has a bunch of shit internally he's dealing with, and he's distracted. Yeah, I'm not going to pretend to know. That's one of I'm going to stay out of that one. Just lack of information. I don't know. Well, they have that American journalist, and they're, like, accusing America of being complicit in it, so they're holding him longer for it as a result. I think it's like Washington Post or something. Yeah, I don't know. Some the bridge these... thing is crazy. The bridge thing is straight up mandibles. That was like a crazy thing to wake up to. Competency crisis. What I'm leaning to, okay. I don't know. I don't know. That's all. I well, anyway, Marty, I, I when I was, <laughs> I've when I was in Costa, on a boat. When I was in Costa Rica, I had a ten minutes to go before my workshop, and you decided we were going to solve Middle East peace. So um, I decided that when we were five minutes past your your hard stop, I was going to ask you about both the bridge and uh, Moscow. What do you, so what do you think about are. what's going on in the Red Sea right now? The 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 Houthi rebels are allowing still China and Russia to go as, through. They're still allowing China and Russia to go through. Now. It I, is crazy and, that how asymmetric the warfare is. The, the the Houthis are just locking it down. Dude, like four weeks ago, you were like giving Biden shit for trying to open the thing. Trying to open what? 
for hitting the Houthis? Like, which way do you want it? I, I, I'd like world peace and free trade. <laughs> yeah, it's that's such a like. fucking cop out. That's not a cop out. It's such a fucking if the if the American if the American naval and military industrial complex is going to do anything, it should be to have fucking open shipping channels. You can't even fucking do that. Straight up mandibles. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Mandibles. So we're gonna, great book. You guys should all read it. Um, not, <laughs> not that hard to read. Doesn't take that long. Yeah. Uh, be the change in the world that Marty is not doing himself. Uh, stay humble, stack sets. Peace and love and that I, I take umbrage. <laughs>